What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Everton Football Manager 2022 Rebuild Series. Leave a like on the video for being enjoying it. And we have got a youth intake here. Of course, there might be a sneaky look over to the top left. Six in the Premier League. We're still maintaining that, which is pretty good since January. But we're going to go through uh, quickly where we were expected at average intake. That's what, yeah, the preview really said. So we'll go through them. I'm pretty happy we got three top talents, like one star ability, some decent potentials. So we'll see these guys first. Of course, John Fleming, who's an Irish left back. But once again, he's one of these that's shown as a natural center back. But again, we go back. That says, yeah, D. Al, defender left. That uh, struck me as, yeah, struck me as he'll be a left back. And especially the fact that he's very weak on his left foot. So, if anything, he's right footed. He should be described uh, as a DR. <laughs> I don't know, but okay. He's a centre back, 185 centimetres. Okay, pace not the best, but I think good enough to sign up. Uh, bravery is pretty high. Uh, I, I don't know how good he'll get. Uh, I think he's decent. Uh, decent, could be a good Premier League player, but I don't think he'll be like that wonder kid type, just initially taking a look at his overall ability. So he'll want that youngster deal, and yeah, you know when they're a really hot prospect, they want like a full-time deal for you to offer. Uh, so yeah, I don't mind that. Quick negotiation. Alan Cronin here, so another Irish, get a couple of Irish lads through, or out of all these guys, and they're yeah, a couple of the better talents in the intake. 16 determination, really rate that highly. He should be able to get close, if not, yeah, reach his potential. Uh, but I'll say being that hard worker, but his work rate is seven and teamwork eight. So that's maybe not on the same. Well, yeah, if those were 16s too, that would be quite impressive. Oh, definitely a defensive midfielder, but yeah, 15 tackling. That's going to be his key, but he's. I think he'll have pretty solid passing, like or technique, like with the, in terms of passing and technique. Vision's only seven, but I think he'll be that DM that is accomplished with passing, not being overly creative, like doesn't have the vision. But yeah, he'll be comfortable with the pass. So physically, another one that isn't that strong, but yeah, he'll get a contract. <laughs> Maybe oh, he's actually going to want a deal. So I wonder if he'll be a little a bit seen. His potential might push up a little bit higher as we go on. But we just did a little bit negotiation there. That's what we land on for his deal. And now this guy looks interesting, just off his ability of his versatility, like the attributes. Oh, <laughs> his positions. And now let's see what his attributes. Guan Li, quick. All oh, you rarely see that. Like, they're all 16. This man could be so quick, and he's promising. That's exciting. Again, obviously, at a guess, he was probably born in China. And if we go to... Oh, wait. Okay, no, place of birth. So he obviously would have moved to England early because it doesn't even show nationality England, which is... Oh, sorry. Yeah, it just shows England. It doesn't show China, which is interesting. He's not credited his place of birth, which was China. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> they moved over at a young age. But regardless, and he's got that good, I say 14, yeah. 14 is pretty solid for determined, uh, for determination, so he is determined. Yeah, uh, dribbling, so he's quick and dribble. Imagine, like, at his best, this guy, he could be so dangerous with that pace. Uh, Guan Li, a real prospect. A real prospect. And, yeah, looks like his initial is uh, similar to the last guy. And there we go. Um, similar kind of contract get accepted too at the end. So yeah, I'm happy. With, I'm probably most excited by him and then Alan Cronin and John Fleming. The opposite way we took a look at him. And as we scroll down, if there's any others, I was going to say if there's any others that still have a star for their current ability, Joe Hunter might be alright. But we'll take a look at Marlon Lloyd. Ooh, good determination. Again, that 14, solid enough. There's a few really poor attributes he does have, but if he's someone that is going to train well and develop, and especially we just get him on that yeah youth contract deal that you'll notice is a bit cheaper than those guys that will be wanting the full time, uh, full time contract to be signed now at least. But yeah, Joe Hunter, really interested to see what he's looking like, and mentally looks insane. Determination of seventeen. You know, I like that. Uh, that's a really good attribute to have. Technically, it looks so balanced. Long throws, 
throw throw long long throw that out the window. If he, he's not, that's not going to matter if he's not doing throw-ins. You put penalty taking in the same bracket and even long shots as a defensive-minded player. It looks like he probably will be your standard centre back. But his jumping reach is he still got weaknesses again physically. I do wonder, is that a trend? Is that something you can address? The real FM experts might know the answer to that, or maybe it's just unlucky. But what I'm posing, what I'm posing the question here, say if you have really good coaches of the on the physical side, could that impact the physical attributes of your youth intake players? Or yeah, there's some things I've always never known, but I'm wondered, oh, could those things link together? Very well could be. But yeah, one thing also, I wonder if he could be like a wing back or even turn into like a right midfielder. It doesn't have the worst like attacking attributes. And yeah, it, it, interesting type, but that's a good thing. If he's got versatility, even if we don't see him playing that role for us, it's like that increases his overall value. So then we'll take a look at Leon Metcalf. Who, oh, he does again. See? There's a reason they're all poor. Oh, obviously we got that one pacey winger, but yeah, maybe he was just naturally quick. But I'm just saying, he's good enough to sign up. Or oh, determination. Out of all those mentals, his teamwork is 17. I don't know. Maybe maybe he'll be a surprise. Uh, that's that's a very high attribute. Maybe balances out. Yeah, sign him up, and then we're going head into decent talents and. I'm there. Yeah, this God, oh, there's so many of these guys. I'm only going to show you anyone will sign up if they're notable, like if they seem good enough, or especially just they're a decent talent, low potential. Uh, like maybe if that potential may not be right for whatever reason, because that's a lot to go through. But they're probably all not good enough unless we show them to you. So this lad might be one exception, but almost all of them they've been that similar, low strength and low pace. So I'm really intrigued by that why so many of them are yeah pretty poor in that but his determination really good like his yeah, we'll just go back to him to talk for a second yeah michael mccauley from scotland 17 determination 17 teamwork and even 14 a work rate he's going to train the house down and i said it previously i've said this before in an fm video like that's it sets the tone it the tone the standard for everyone else maybe others with higher potential than him so Again, I don't know if that's an official thing. That could be rubbish, but <laughs> that's what I would see because I see FM as a really realistic game. And if you've got a guy in the youth team working so hard, the other lads are going to see that and want to copy it. But if they were to have low determination, low work rate themselves, will that over? Like, does that, does someone else uh, being a really a high work rate type player just overtake that? I don't know, but I like the sound of it anyway. And even this guy from Wales as well, 17 determination, just having those guys there. His work rate, yeah, only 10, teamwork 8, so that those two not to the same levels. Natural fitness outstanding. Sometimes I like to sign someone like this. Yeah, determination and the more so natural fitness really, really high. And see if that reflects anything in his own growth specifically compared to those others when he maybe doesn't look that great especially low strength and stamina but you don't know that's an interesting mix really good fitness while having really poor stamina that's like there's some of these like sometimes you'll get that mix because the role of a dice of being a youth intake player being a regen uh being a new gen whatever pronouns you prefer he definitely gets a contract because yeah want to see him in action uh see how he actually develops so this is where we're sitting at the moment. Your eyes go to Chelsea, play two less games, but we've been able to maintain a difference with them. And maybe some of the others, Norwich is slowly, yeah, they're, they're not all... I mean, Norwich have done pretty well. Uh, Puki with 18, they've done well to stay this high in the table. Uh, nowhere near relegation this season, but... Uh, I'm really happy that we're in position. Like, it looks real likely that we'll get back into Europe even if it isn't Champions League, I'd love to squeeze. I'd love to sneak in there. But yeah, if at least, look, top four, 
to say Liverpool, Man United, Man City, Arsenal, and Tottenham doing well. Like if they're having good seasons, it makes it hard for you. But I reckon they'll go down to the wire. I think a minimum we'll get in Europa League. Uh, we'll finish the top six. Again, if we just hold our form. And you might sense that we don't really have any top players here. We're maybe getting, or we're playing a smarter way than last season, just trying to get the results uh, where we can. So, yeah, let's go and cover those. So, we'll keep our eyes on the results uh, since that Watford game. And we actually managed to beat Chelsea. So, that was a great result. Lewis Cook getting it done. Uh, FA Cup, a good win against QPR. That was just yeah, just getting over the line, 1-0 there. Unfortunately, now we pinpoint a couple losses. I was disappointed by that. I guess we had some good form, uh, three wins in a row, building up to that. Uh, and then, yeah, the two poor games in a row, both away from home. So two away games, uh, yeah, made it tricky for us. Then Aston Villa, confidence was down a bit. We couldn't beat him at home, but Dali Ali got a, a late one there just to get an equaliser, so not too bad. Uh, and then we progressed into February, having a, a better month, uh, undefeated month. Uh, Nottingham Forest were able to win their uh, FA Cup. Uh, we're going to have a game here. It's lined up perfectly with the youth intake. Uh, but, yeah, um, which makes West Ham. We've got a game. Again. We just played against them right now, 4-0, uh, which was good. And then 6-1 against Sheffield United. Uh, they're being, you know, not the greatest team in the league. If you just take a look, 18th. And then another time, we've got a few results where we've got that equaliser to get a draw. Like Aston Villa, uh, then Leicester. You can't win everyone. Uh, but then saying that, March, we have been very good. We've marched on. And Wolves, 2-1. Blackpool. All our FA Cup games have been, like, the teams we should be winning like, we're, they're comfortable games for us. We're not worried about losing them. But even though it took us late in that game to score those two, uh, then West Brom in the league, like, last two games, uh, our question was, were we scoring enough goals? Uh, we posed that. But then some games, we just play some beautiful, fluid football. Um, yeah, last two games, we've scored four goals and very impressive uh, football like that, especially just West Ham. We beat 4-0, uh, and we're going to have a quarterfinal game against them today. Uh, they're 10th in the league. So, you know, it's like they have some good games, some poor games. Uh, we're definitely having a better season. If you look at the position difference, I don't think it says as much as the points difference. You see there's a separation. But you may have seen this in the inbox. Yeah, Larian, uh, we didn't want to have a payment for loss of earnings, so we rejected a deal. Uh, yeah, he hasn't really fit into our new setup where we use the false nine, and I really like the football we've been playing. Could have worked him in, but in the end, we might take a bit of a profit for him. His value's maybe taken a hit, uh, but yeah, uh, he, he hasn't been bad, but we've just kind of tried to rebuild, <laughs> yeah, ironically, try to rebuild the football we're playing, and yeah, probably going to try and find a move for him uh, once more, maybe just offer him out to clubs. I might put that up to 10 million and just see what, yeah, who we can get to bite, as there's a few there. And you can take a look at some of the stats here. Smith Rowe, top goal scorer, 10 goals. See, we're not relying on that one striker or even two strikers when we played that setup, scoring big goals for us. It's, it's a bit of a switch in our play. And, I mean, we're having a better season than last season. I think says a lot. Um, Livermento being great. Adley getting assists. Uh, Belerdi, very good with the passes. Uh, Belerdi. Uh, but the financial, like, this is a bit just draining, admittedly. This month, funnily enough, this month we've made a bit of a bit of profit. That TV revenue has been very strong, 5.4 mil. And again, it's not like we've got a lot of players sold, nothing like that. I like when we go to this section anyway. I think you see it a bit more in detail. Uh, yeah, look at that, 5.4. Last month, 7.4. Just do a bit of calculation with the time just over halfway through the month. I think we're on track to beat that a little bit. And then the expenditure, yeah. This month, like you got the, the wages and bonuses are the highest. But is that, is that like more than the norm? Like there's going to be clubs in the league without a doubt that's going to be paying more. So it's about the income that, yeah, the income, what's coming in for us. Saying what I said about the month, we've only got one home game, one game left, but that's something. We've already had three home games within the month. So, yeah, says a bit. Uh, but we're going to round it off with an FA Cup game as well, which is at home. So I think, yeah, we, we it, 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 it strikes at a good time, I suppose, uh, to have, what, 
four out of five games at home. That's good for the revenue. Can it be a rare month we actually make profit? We'll see. But yeah, it's 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 tough. Like it starts to make me think, like starts to make me think, how far can we actually go in this rebuild? Because once more, we got this money. I'm sure we'll get a bit of an intake again <laughs> or, or just an influx of money that would go in. Like, like we got that budget. Like, that's so much left remaining we could have used on players, but I've stayed away from it. No, I don't want to say FM is scripted. No, no. Braga, the only team, or the, the team he wants to join, and they're the only team, nah, not wanting to pay all of his wage. Sorry. Out of all these teams, especially a Serie A team and a Premier League team, and they offer, yeah, I'm going to expect, accept those both. 10 millions, it's what we offered out, and they're both like non negotiable deals, which is generally the case when you offer them out just to show you non negotiable. Yeah, he's got he's got to pick one of those teams, surely. <laughs> you would think if he was happy about going to Braga. Am I right? They're not even a playable league. I didn't make Portugal playable in this save. Why do you want to go there? <laughs> no, he's doing it again. This is why I rejected you already, man. We're not. Well, I mean, it's not like it, it's coming off his fee. I get it. But what you can do, you can press negotiate at the bottom left. Maybe try and draw. Oh. You just feel, you that's an FM thing, hold up, suggest terms. Okay. He has 171 weeks remaining until his contract. The total cost of his salary until then is 10 mil. That's just me realizing how much money, he's not even a like a crazy player and he's getting that much money. It's just it's crazy numbers, man. But yeah. My thing, my re uh, what I was going to say, FM, when you just click it one, two, you're like, no, I felt like I clicked it too many times. That's going to get rejected. In the end, we lowered it a little bit. So just take that 900K off the final deal. It's not like we're losing money that we currently have. Just, yeah. <laughs> That's not, the, I don't think we did the worst there. Because the previously, the one that I rejected, the actually offer was lower. <laughs> so we're getting more money in the end anyway, if that other one went through. How often do you see this as announce Guan Li? Do whatever it takes to sign him. He's that good. That is in capitals. I want the... Guan, he could be. He could be special. Results don't really go our way here. Chelsea against Leeds. They even got a sending off but scored before that. And Tottenham 3-0. So we got to win our game? Yeah, say Chelsea wins their game in hand. We're only one point ahead of them. So we have to fight super hard to, yeah, keep a European place. That's just what I say. Uh, when the top six, what's seen as the top six, they have good seasons. Yeah, it makes it hard to get into Europe. And I do want to pose a question to you guys. The goal from here is, do we settle for winning the Premier League as completing the rebuild? I feel going all the way to, which I feel that's going to be so far to... I think Liverpool and Man United, oh, you got a group City in them, surely. But th they're just a step ahead. And I just feel this is going to take a real long time to do the sweep of both. And yeah, do we settle on... Yeah, because I've seen some people do rebuild and they don't win the Champions League. But yeah, they settle for winning the league. So let me know what you think. Because we just got to jump. Because I wanted, yeah, I've been planning to do more rebuilds. And like I've done, you know, the previous ones I did, like Barca, Juventus. I've not wanted one to take a really, really long time. But yeah, let's continue. And don't forget about the Aussie we signed, Ruben Rhodes. Just don't forget about him. He's having a good season out on loan in Israel. Hopefully he does get the work permit. As I said, uh, up and coming, the next Timmy Cahill. Mental, they're looking good. Determination, I mean, that's starting to go up. You just want him to keep developing and he's going to be good. He looks he looks excited. I've never wanted to be biased and sign someone from Australia just for that fact, but he's already got a cap. Hold on. He might be something good. Even Arsenal pick up a win as well. So, yeah, this is how it's been. It's been real tough just to maintain a top six position. Top four has been hard to settle in. All right, it looks like we're game day. Home game for us. Gives us, give us the good chance to advance in the... Uh, see, this this is interesting. The fact we've gotten this far, but I think you can't really say, well, we've looked like winning this. We haven't really beat a huge contender. Uh, this will be it today. But the fact we've gotten to this round, 
we can go far. I'd love to go all the way to the final and then say like, yep, we've made it this far. Let's go win it. But we'll take it match by match and hopefully win today. Uh, we're just going to have to get rid of a couple bench options there. There is a few players that's unhappy and we haven't used them enough so they want to leave. Uh, it's simple. It's a weird one. Just to show you guys. It gives us a couple grayed out players and if it's ever been the case, we just put a couple like younger guys in, like youth players, but um, we've actually done pretty well with injuries, so we don't need to worry about it. We've got a full team uh, to select regardless. Uh, yeah, we're strong, especially that connection midfield. Nah, nah, good team for today. Let's go in. There we go. So we're just gonna go show everyone the recent praise has been justified. Yeah, a few, mo quite a few motivated. Let's go. We're taking pretty good form into this game. Last four games have been wins. Let's just see. Let's see. West Ham, yeah, a bit of mixed form, and you see how they're playing as well, but maybe that could, hmm. There's every chance they could shape up well against us. But at the same time, we could be allowed to play a very strong possession game. Let's see what is going to be true. What is going to be the truth here? Mepham. Okay, Fabio Vieira. Classy and then takes a dive and uh, they could be sucked in. <laughs> it's going to give us a penalty. Is that going to be reviewed? Checking decision, possible penalty, and it's awarded. Love to see it. Dally steps up, scores. He's definitely played his role this season. Only scored nine, was never going to be a huge goal scorer playing a false nine and scores from a penalty there. But Dally, I've liked him. He's been one consistent uh, throughout the save. There we go. Oh, instant. No time to even praise. Ah, no time to praise. Come on. After that goal we just scored. And now. Oh, wow. How are you not closing him down? Well done. Where's this going to go? Zuma. Bowen from range. Forced him from way. Yeah, not likely. It would have to be a great hit, really. To get it done from there. Okay, okay. 1-0, not bad, not bad, guys. But are they going to... Yeah, they're really going to start to test us now, I'm feeling. So what are we going to do? Hmm. I just want to see what the match stats are like. Oh, my God. Ho hopefully this is just a chance for us, but highlights coming thick and fast. And maybe this is just the football we're playing right now, thick and fast. Fabio Vieira, this lad is very exciting. Not just as a player, but his, you know, the prospect of him for us as a, a key player. Smith Rowe. Not quite. Not quite there. But that was an exciting chance. Okay, that makes me a bit more happy. No, it's a game where we are, yeah, yeah good possession, 60% after the first 20 minutes. Okay. I was worried when they had a couple highlights in a row. But now, okay, maybe we're settling. Cook, who's had quite the good season... And he has taken these runs through the middle, plays it to Dally. Dally goes very close. Not quite. Nah, decent. Decent performances from some of our players there. So, so yeah, that midfield three, really good. Fabio Vieira. Oh, thought that was placed well. Smith Rowe. This could be good. If you just take a look at our runs and how we're moving, like as a unit, yeah, it's... Our style, Adley, waits for that pass. Fabio Vieira, we've wasted opportunities. And just so you know, guys, halfback roll, ease off tackles is selected. Now, you know, Alan has a yellow card. But okay. I feel like we deserve one more goal. Definitely not for it to go the other way. We've been, we've created a lot of opportunities in the half. Oh, Miranda, been very good. Obviously, hasn't got the same, yeah, oh, hold on. We're just talking about the comparison to the other side in Livramento. Livramento, yeah, he's been more dominant, but I felt Miranda's just been a bit more... Com not more composed, but his thing has been good defending and being composed. Obviously, yeah, Livramento being quite dominant. But 
you might notice that Livramento, not the same defensive ability, but here we go. Adley, come on, man. I'm annoyed, like, if we don't win this. We've had 10 shots in total and only two have been on target. They've but we've been a bit wasteful. And we, have, we do try to be patient, so I'm just happy with dominated possession. Keep them, yeah, in a good mindset, every single player out there. We really do need that next. We do need another. 1-0. It just puts it, it makes it up for grabs. I'm not sure if West Ham deserve it, to be fair. But that's not always the way football works. Oh, Mippen, what are you doing? You could almost say West Ham, I mean, like they could have found a way to score a goal, honestly. But they haven't been that accurate as well. All shots have been off target. It's really intriguing. Once more, we'll switch around, see if West Ham have made... You probably, yeah, want to see their formation. Then we get our stats. We tend to put that... Yeah. Might need a change. So once more, Leonardo Bellardi, I talked about how he's got... He's got a couple roles he can come in, like rep, like right back, a DM, DM where he's competent, uh, a couple positions there. Just a land on that yellow... Uh, that's even Ben Grodfri, yeah, he can... Uh, I've just like keeping him at centre-back, to be fair, but Belurdi's been that fill-in man and uh, does well. Then Smithrow, who's not having the greatest games. He's been good this season. Uh, sometimes he has games like this. Gets a poor rating, but he tries to do things, I guess you can say, and when he doesn't have... Or when they don't come off, when he doesn't score, when he doesn't get involved in a goal, yeah, he gets a poor rating, but he... Like, he moves dangerous and he creates. So, I'm not always so hard on him. Because he scored some important goals this year. 1-0. Uh, this freshening up could be important. We've still, like, yeah, West Ham, uh, they haven't they haven't had a goal. Uh, they haven't had a shot on target, which makes it hard to score a goal. <laughs> and the goal's in mind. So, just one more change. Okay. What we're going to do here... This is where, you know, when we need to make a movement, we want to show you what we do here. Uh, Vieira, who he can, you know, we can plot him in there as well. So it's Adley. I think Adley, yeah, Vieira. So as you can see, because he can play centrally as well, still a solid role. And then we bring in Marcus Edwards, who wants more. But th this doesn't make him happy, bring him on as a sub. But yeah, I think we've got to rotate a bit more, uh, or he could want to leave as well. But that balance we have is so good. But let's keep this right now. Even if we don't score another, just keep that strong team, which is not allowed. It's another defensive. Like, I didn't I just say earlier, we're getting the best of, out, out of our team. We're just trying to get the best playing away that's going to get... Like, come on, man. I'm like... <laughs> I just feel like tactically this season we got it right. Last season, maybe we had a tactic that was... A good tactic in general but maybe yeah it just wasn't fitting the personnel we had and I think here even though you might say we have some good strikers and we're not utilizing a proper role we're using a false nine but yeah we're getting like we're having a very good defensive season admittedly so that's always good to see but yeah, uh, really uh, a good game. We're playing some responsible football and smart football where we are restricting our opponents and yeah, controlling the games on our terms. So yeah, good result again. So we just say, yeah, good work. Professional performance. And Everton defeat West Ham again. We just did it and we did it. And it was a different kind of performance in the end. Not as many goals, but same result. We get a bit of prize money. That's a decent 367. And now, where we'll finish uh, this episode, at least, where we are sitting. Oh, we're sitting in a bit of profit. This is rare, man. This is rare. And, oh, there's always a hit at the end of the month, though. So, yeah, we will just have to see, especially there's no other game for the month. We might just take a loss. But, yeah, it's rare this time in a month we're actually sitting profit and the fact 10 million, like, we go income. Yeah, we don't need to look at this here. Um, we're more so focusing on that. Last month, it was 8.7. So, yeah, uh, very uh, very good month in terms of that. But, yeah, we're going to leave it there. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Uh, we are going to play out the rest of the season. I'm just thinking, there's well, maybe there's a chance we make it to the FA Cup final. Uh, that could be a real important one. And maybe late in the season, yeah, a final game could be important. So, we'll just see. Who we haven't played yet to finish off the season, or played twice, Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, Man United, they're all going to be tricky games. 
there's every chance we oh, we want to do our very best just to hold on to a top six position. I think breaking into the top four, admittedly, getting back into the Champions League is going to be tricky. But what I touched on earlier, maybe going that far with Everton, it, it might be a real challenge. And even the Premier League, I, I feel like we're just settling in this save. We've got, we know it's going to take us still a while. And we're just, yeah, we're just cruising along. But we do want to get to that point where we're going to have that substantial success and where we feel like, yes, we've rebuilt this Everton team. We're just building towards that, though. But anyway, I'll leave it there and I'll see you guys next time.